All right, we're here again with Bill Tackett, former Cole County prosecuting attorney. And Bill, let's let's start wide range here. Can you explain to viewers why it's unique to have the defendant take the stand? Well, I think this was a textbook example of why you don't do that very often. Uh, he was very stoic. He was unemotional. Um, very, uh, it was a very scripted affair, and it was very obvious. And that's the reason why I suspect that Joseph Elledge asked to be on the stand. I'm not sure that a lawyer would actually put him on the stand given the weight of this evidence. And so from what you saw today, what do you think the defense is thinking right now after their man was on the stand for about four hours taking questions from them? Well, it's, it's become very difficult for them because his verbiage, um, everything, his demeanor, he's not consistent with all the things that he said on tape, nine hours of him being abusive, using foul language, being articulate, and now he's acting like he's very awkward and, you know, kind of like, hey, you know, I, I don't really know what happened. It's just, it's, they're lacking, the defense is lacking the consistency of his demeanor and the things that he's saying, and it's a real problem for him. Is it fair to say that one of the biggest risks they took by putting him on the stand was now prosecuting attorney Dan Knight, had all that time, if you remember, to prep this cross-examination. What did you see from attorney Knight when he came out? What, what Danny did, Danny Knight, he, he is painting a picture of a very cruel person, of a person that's not stoic and just kind of sitting there. He's, he's showing through all of the, the videos that were done and all of the actions of the defendant over three days after he, he killed her that you know, he, this wasn't an accident. This shouldn't be voluntary manslaughter, right? This is a higher level homicide. And he's doing that quite well, but he could never have done it had Joseph Elledge not taken the stand. It's rare that a prosecuting attorney gets this type of opportunity. Is that fair to say? Yes, it, it's not very common that the defendant takes the stand. And particularly with nine hours of audio, of him abu being abusive and saying uh, things that you can't say here, for instance. And so that's very unusual to have both the defendant take the stand and to have the defendant have nine hours of audio. To be the attorney, right, you're going against someone who has no legal experience in this sense, right? Joyce Felge was a mechanical engineer. What's that like? Well, it's obviously very difficult when Every, th every time you're asked something and you try to deny it, the state produces the audio tape of you saying it, which is what happened in court today right off the bat. He said, no, I didn't say that. They queued up the tape, boom, there it was. Instantly he's lying. And that just makes it terribly difficult to testify when you've got audio of yourself saying one thing and you're trying to say another. What did the jury learn about Joseph Elledge today? Well, I just, learned they already knew from all the audio recordings um, that he was abusive and that th this is a pretty cruel guy. Um, they got to see him up close and personal, tried to wiggle his way out of it today, and uh, Dan Knight just didn't let that happen. You were a prosecuting attorney. If you had this opportunity, how often do you prep? What are you looking to set him up for when you have the defendant in the box? Well, if you don't have a lot of evidence, um, then you know you have to continue cross-examination until you've convinced the jury that this person committed the crime. In this case, there's a, there's a lot to cross-examine him on, and that's why it was an unusual decision. Next few days, everyone has kind of come out and said, right, defense, prosecutor, judge have said it's, it's really wrapping up here. What do, you, what do you think we can expect coming up? I think you're going to have closing arguments tomorrow. Um, the jury will then, they're going to deliberate. Um, you know, this, this verdict could come pretty quickly. They're, it's not a, whether or not he did it. It's what level of homicide you're dealing with. And that's where they will spend some time dealing with that aspect of it. All right. Bill Tackett with some analysis for us. Bill, thank you.